What is up ladies and gents, it's your boy Lou Streets back with some more LSV and in this video we're going to be talking about Liu Kang's strategy and how to play him. I had a nice amount of people reach out saying they're struggling to adapt to this character because he is different than Mortal Kombat 11. So before we get started, hit the like and subscribe button, let's jump into it and hopefully this will help you improve your Liu Kang gameplay. Alright, so first let's start off with his special moves. We have Fireball, which is back for a 1, pretty good for zoning. Low fireball, down back one. I think it's called Dragon's Tail now. Air fireball, which is jumping back for a one. Uh, down back four, which is Dragon's Breath. This is only good for specific scenarios. And then we got Flying Kick, which you guys are used to seeing. And then also we have Bicycle Kick, which is now called Dragon's Dance, and it looks a little bit different, right? So I'd say of those special moves, the ones I use the most are Flying Kick for good Oki on knockdown. Uh, Dragon Dance is good for the corner, but it does push full screen when you mid screen, so keep that in mind. And then, of course, his zoning is great with down back one. You'll be using this a whole lot and a lot of fireball ones. I don't really use the air one that much because there's no real use for it for me unless I'm in the corner just trying to extend some damage. So, the main thing that people are struggling with when it comes to Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 1 is his buttons have changed dramatically. We don't have the classic 1, 2, 3 from Mortal Kombat 11, which covers a ton of distance. I missed that string, but we still must adjust, right? So, we have 1, 2. 1, 2, which is great because it's zero on block. We can stagger that into some throws. So, that's why we love 1, 2. The next string we have, which is great for punish, is his F1, 4. Starts as a high and hits low, which is great because you can convert meterless. Like that. So we always love using the F14 for punishes because it's pretty quick and it starts high and hits low. The next string that we have is this 221. Doesn't do a ton of pushback, but good for staggers into grabs. Good for 2 2 back dash shimmy with the back two. So keep that in mind. Next string we have is this F43. Great for pushback, and we'll get into this later on, but just want to show it to you. It's F43. It's back 2-3. The second hit is a high, so it can be ducked. Keep that in mind, that's his meterless launcher. And then we have his 3-2, which ends in overhead. Sounds valuable, but it starts on a high, so that's a little tricky. But his 3-2 ends in overhead, so it gives him a slight amount of mix. And then we have his 3-3-3 and his 4-3. Now, both of these starting high, and that's kind of the tricky part about Liu Kang that frustrates people, because for some odd reason, Liu Kang has five highs. Standing one is a high, standing two is a high, standing three is a high, standing four is a high, and F1 is a high. So all those are highs, and this is what makes Liu Kang tricky. So let's get into his approach. So for my approach with Liu Kang, you either wanna be all the way in, or you wanna be all the way out. So you wanna be all the way out because great zoning, maybe like three fourth screen, or even maximum distance with about three fourth screen, you're safe, or either all the way in for F4, or even down four, which can gel into F4 if they try to jump or move. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. But you don't want to be in this range right here because you see how short his down one is with 24 frames of recovery. His down three got a little bit of range with 23 frames of recovery. And then down four, a little bit slow with 25 frames of recovery. And all of his buttons riff from right here. Even his F4-3. See how that barely touches? You're going to get punished for that every time. But right here, back two. One, two. Two, two. Three, three. Four, three. You see how that's barely making contact? So you want to be all the way in or you want to be at least three-fourths so people can't just jump in on you. That's pretty much my distance and spacer for Liu Kang. So the thing with Liu Kang that some people find frustrating is he doesn't have a lot of variety in his gameplay, especially when you compare this version to Mortal Kombat 11. He has 3-2 for mix, and that does some pushback, and it does a hard knockdown, but you don't get much off of it. You don't even get that much Oki off of it unless you're in the corner. Then you get F14, but that's a hard confirm unless you know it's a guaranteed punish. So he pretty much doesn't have any mix. His mix is pretty much non-existent, right? So the key to his game plan is, his game plan is very accessible, but it's also very vanilla. So it comes like this. F434, this is gonna be a string that you use a whole lot. For people like me who like to have variety and options, it's unfortunate this, that this is what he has to do, but it's just the way that they design them, right? So F434 has great pushback, and you're gonna see the layers to this in a second. So the thing with Liu Kang's mind games, as far as this particular string is, is very opponent dependent. So you gotta read what your opponent wants to do. So F434, pushback, you see the distance that we have right now, right? If, if I press stand in one, it's gonna whip. So let's say that this opponent press stand in one in that situation. With the pushback, I backdash, boom, back two, you know what I'm saying? And it gets me for a meterless launcher. Now the thing is with this string, it's false block punishable. So let's show you the difference when it's not a normal block. So now we got a false block punish. Uh, 
Now I'm right in his face and I can get punished. So this is the mind game right here, right? Because let's assume that the rest of the blocks are normal and the last one for the last kick of the F434 is a false block punish. Boom, you getting punished right there every time. So this is the mind game. So now that you don't have the normal pushback on block and they got the false block, now that's where you put the mind games in. So you F43, stagger into a grab, you know what I'm saying? You do that, you get punished, but, uh, but F43, they looking for, oh, stagger into the grab. They don't see that coming, right? Or even just, you know, F4, now you can switch it up. So that's the mind games to that because you gotta use this string a whole lot. Now let's say that they doing reversal attack. So now instead of follows blocking, you playing those mind games, let's say that they do a reversal attack. Let's see what that looks like. You get punished for that, right? But the thing is, even though you get punished for this, now you can play the mind games right here. Now you stagger that. Oh, they go for it. Now you get a full punish. Look at that. Full combo off that, you know? So these are the mind games between his F4-3, which can make things tricky, but at the same time work to your advantage. You're gonna get tired of using that string, but the string is very valuable to his overall approach. Okay, so based on the F4-3-4 string, we've seen three options. They can either take a normal block, which resets neutral, or if they try to punish off of it, it sets up the back two with punish. Or they can try to do a false block, but if they false block it, you get punished. However, if you read that and stagger it, you get a free throw because of that extra flame of them trying to block. Or if they try to do an armor response, now you get a full combo punish. So let's see what happens on a poke. Let's say they don't do those three options and they do this instead. We're gonna say this fireball is a poke because I got it set to that. So we're gonna say that this fireball is a poke. So let's do that same string now. Poke, hard knockdown. Poke, hard knockdown. So based on that F434 string, you got four different mind games you can play which sets up other parts of his tools. So a lot of people have been asking me why do I use that string so much when I play? And that's the reason why, because without the conditioning of the F434 string, you don't get any access to his mind games. And you gotta remember, Liu Kang has five highs now. He doesn't have those good mids and that low starter that he had in Mortal Kombat 11. So you pretty much have to condition something, otherwise you're always gonna get mashed on. And that's why people feel like it's a struggle to pick up Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 1. Now you understand what the F434 string is so valuable for. So now that we understand the value of that string setting up his pressure, we know we need to be all the way in to apply it, or we need to be all the way out for space control. This also affects what you want your cameo to be because are you gonna try to get damage with Serena? Or are you gonna try to cover up some of Liu Kang's deficiencies with some mix? Let's decide about cameos. Okay, so let's talk cameos. Now me personally, I feel that Liu Kang struggles so much to open up people because he relies on throw so much. Then when you get inside, you should make your damage count. So I like Serena because of this reason, because you get a combo here. That's 41% for one bar and a cameo, right? Now, some people would like to use zoning or stuff like that, but think about it. Liu Kang already has great zoning. So what would I use Serena back here for when Liu Kang has great zoning anyway, right? If anything, you might want to switch it up for mix if you don't want to use it for combos, so then you will switch to somebody like Kung Lao. I'll show you why. Okay, so we know that Liu Kang doesn't have any mix whatsoever, right? So this is where Kung Lao can become valuable to him. So let's see, we got 3-2, which ends in overhead, right? 3-2 ends in overhead. So let's do this. Call back assist, walk up for a throw, and now we got the throw, right? Because in reality, this isn't a true combo string. So let's see, like, if we did that same thing, he can still block that. But do this, get the throw going because they holding block. And now the next time we do it, they might get tired of getting hit with that. So then, now they're not holding block this time, you get a full combo. Or you can do something like this, but it's not that economically great. You see a lot of people using Kung Lao and Liu Kang together for this reason, because he can get that teleport combo. But as you saw, it only did 22%. And even for that setup, I'm spending two bars of Kung Lao for that, right? So it's useful, but at the same time, I feel like when it comes to Liu Kang, you gotta find your identity of how you wanna play. But for the most part, I'd rather get 41% per touch since I already got rely on throw so much anyway, right? Even with Frost, we can do that same setup for Kung Lao into the low. But then, you know, is it worth it? 
31% for a bar, so you scaling things. So it just really comes down to preference. I just like to get big combos, so that's why I pit Serena with them. You can also use Sonya as well, because she does her pop-up with her corner setups. But overall, that just comes down to preference, because Liu Kang is pretty strong. But the main thing is just find a way to condition your opponent into what you want them to do, and then you just work off of that. So I'm not going to do uh, any combos on this video, because I have a combo tutorial. I'll put that in the top right corner right now. So if you guys want to check that out Also, I'll put it at the end of the video got about 30,000 views and I'll show you how to get about close to 52% with Liu Kang But when it comes to combos, I think when it comes to using Liu Kang you want to get your most bang for your buck So, you know put Sonya in You know Get 38% right there. We had the 41%er I showed you a little bit early in the video with Serena. So pretty much just getting your bang for your buck is why I think Liu Kang is most valuable after you set up your conditioning, right? So I'd say in conclusion, Liu Kang is still very strong. He's not what he was in Mortal Kombat 11, but that doesn't mean he isn't strong. I've only been using him in Combat League and I'm like 51 and eight. So I mean, he's still very viable, right? It's just a review of knowing what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are. So in close for F4 pressure, for back two pressure, back dash into whiff to the back two, full screen for great zoning because he has that. He has low zoning, so people will have a hard time avoiding chip, especially if you use him with Sonya, who can cover the skyline. Amp that it becomes a mid. You just don't want to be in this distance right here where you can't reach. Like when he's stubby on the F4-3, this is where you get in trouble at with him, right? Or like, you know, the one, two right there, the back two. But when he can't reach that, that's where he's in trouble. But if you all the way in, you get big damage. And if you all the way out, you get great zoning. So I hope this video helps. Um, another thing to keep in mind, I'll show you this one last thing. A lot of time you will have opponents who just like to jump in from distance. And this is why I love Liu Kang's back two so much. So when I unpause this, I got the computer set to jump towards me. Imagine him doing a jump kick that whiffs. You see me do this all the time to people when they jump in on me in my matches. So that's another great thing for Liu Kang when you like at that intermediate space, almost at full range. Back dash in the back two, it hits all the time. You will be amazed how much this works in the match. And then out of that, look, just off that one point alone, look what you can get damage wise. Let's see what this adds up to. This is gonna get close to 50%, maybe like 45-ish, I think. Let's see where this goes. Look at that. That's no meter right there for a jump in the point and we get 40, 49%, right? So even with that, you get 49% and that's with no bar. So this shows you Liu Kang is still very strong. He's not what he was in Mortal Kombat 11, but he's not trash at all by any stretch of the imagination. He has five highs. His game plan is a little bit vanilla, but it's still effective. And sometimes the high level play doesn't have to be fancy. Sometimes it's all about efficiency. So I hope this video helps. I hope this makes you understand my approach to Liu Kang between you watching my videos, checking out the combo, video, seeing how I play against people in ranked, and then maybe checking out this video. I hope this helps improve your Liu Kang gameplay. I plan to do this with some more characters, so let me know in the comments who you guys prefer, and we'll keep this thing going. So the next time, it's your boy Lou Streets. I am out. Peace. Uh-huh. Nice.